On this episode of Travel Wild, I do some of Australia's most amazing marine counters. First, I jet to WA to swim with the giant whale shark. Then, I jump on the undersea explorer to swim with the minke whale. And finally, I head home to the Gold Coast to show you all how we're protecting our wonderful humpback whales. Halfway up the Western Australian coastline lies the small town of Exmouth. Bordered by Cape Range National Park, it's a gateway to the Ningaloo Reef and where my next eco-adventure begins. The Ningaloo Reef is 260 kilometres long, making it the largest fringing reef in the world. It starts at the top in the northwest Cape and extends all the way south to Red Bluff. The Lewin Current brings a lot of food which helps support a vast myriad of marine life. In March, the Ningaloo Reef spawns and this attracts the smorgasbord of predators who gather to feed on the bounty. From the small plankton to the mighty manta rays, this place is alive with action. But the draw card to this area is the biggest fish in the world, the massive, and I mean humongous, whale shark. People travel great distances to see this mighty fish. They come from all around the world. Three Island Marines has been running whale shark tours since 1997 and is an eco-certified operator. That means not only do we get the chance of a lifetime, we also receive an education for a better understanding of the whale sharks at Ningaloo Reef. So once you've jumped in the water, the first thing you will see is this nice big smiley face. Yay! <laughs> and as soon as you see the whale shark, make sure you get out of its way because it will keep swimming into the group. But part of the adventure is enjoying the remoteness of the Western Australian coastline and learning the secrets that these deep blue waters hide. And what sort of size are the sharks that come here to Ningaloo? Um, they tend to be, the smallest ones tend to be about three or four metres, and then the large ones get anywhere up to about ten metres. It's a pretty big shark. Yeah, pretty <laughs> big fish. <laughs> and do they know how many sharks actually come in here, or whale sharks come in here? Um, well, using the photo ID library that um, Ecocean's developed, we've got just over a thousand whale sharks that have come to Ningaloo over the last 15 years. But even though these sharks are big, you still have to find them in a bigger ocean. And the best way to do this is by spotter plane. From the sky, you have a bird's eye view. But our skipper Richard, who also owns Three Island Marine Charters, also has an eagle eye. Suddenly, the back deck is alive with eager snorkelers, and our chance to swim with a whale shark has come. There is nothing more exciting and adrenaline pumping as coming face to face with the world's biggest shark. And this gentle giant allows us into her domain for brief moments of our lives. The swim only lasts a matter of minutes, but your eyes, mind and heart are soaking up memories that will stay with you forever. And the best thing is, we got to do it again. And this time, I took my camera so I could show to everyone the moment I swam with a whale shark. This magical encounter stirs something deep within and it makes you want to reach out and learn more about how we can help protect the wonderful whale sharks of Ningaloo.
satellite tagging has shown that whale sharks tend to head north once they leave Ningaloo. But the great thing is that um, other countries such as the Philippines, Indonesia, India and Taiwan, they've all actually stopped fishing uh, whale sharks commercially. And Taiwan was the last country to do that and that was last year in April in 2007. The more people who experience nature, the more we want to share this planet with other species. And there is hope we can somehow live in harmony with marine life and wildlife that makes our planet so special. We've had a great day whale sharking. We've seen plenty of whale sharks and the sun's just setting over Ningaloo Reef. So it's time for the whale sharks to sink into those dark deep seas. My next big marine encounter took me to the Undersea Explorer. The Undersea Explorer is an adventure dive boat and this was a Minky Wow expedition. The minkies are the only ones that sort of come up and play with divers. That's right, these are the friendly whales, possibly the friendliest whales in the world. And, uh, and in that way, it meant that we had to have special management. So when we started Undersea Explorer uh, with the idea of harnessing the tourist dollar to have a perpetually funded research vessel, uh, the Minky Whale Project was the first one that we sort of went, yes, this is our chance. You've got whales yeah. that do something that happens yeah. nowhere else in the world. We have whales that come to dive sites, but then like right now we're out here looking just in the open, what we call it, the paddock. And if we see a whale, we stop the boat, Put the lines in, throw the sacrificial researcher in first, <laughs> and if the whale come back, comes back and visits, then we put all the guests in. And these these encounters can last from an hour to five, six hours. To me, it's going to become a minky encounter, and we'll uh, be all getting in on the line, and we'll postpone the dive till after we see what we got. Wait, Susan. We've just got whales off the back. We're going to go for a scuba dive. We're at the clam gardens and we're getting all geared up to go diving. And the minky whales have turned up and they're right off the back. So we're about to jump in for a snorkel and see if we can find minky whales. Suddenly, the action is on. Day one and we have minkies in sight. The aim is to take up your position on the line and literally let the minkies come to you. These friendly whales love to interact. And over the years, the undersea explorer and the researchers have developed the best way for humans and minkies to come together. Both people and whales enjoy the experience. And some interactions involve as many as 20 whales over many hours. And when you are really lucky, you see lots of whales at the same time. Four minkies. Four Two belly flashes. Yeah. With so many whales circling you, you forget to think about time cold water, or even food. I was in minky heaven, and the hours kept passing. Incoming. The researchers were busy documenting the whales, and what you see helps in minky research. I think I've got six different animals. So when you're trying to identify different minky whales, what sort of patterns or markings do you look for? For identification purposes, we work with the natural coloration patterns of dwarf minky whales. And you have to know that dwarf minkies are actually the most highly patterned of all the baleen whales. So their coloration patterns are just as good or even better as a human fingerprint. And they also have scars. Those golf ball sized scars are actually from a cookie cutter shark. And they will last that bright for probably a year and then they faint, as you can see, those old scars. Because the other day we had about 20 whales in our encounter and there were action and minkies and people and everything going everywhere. So, I mean, surely you can't see every single whale. So how do you work out how many whales are at that 
encounter other than your photos? So Alistair will be in the water taking stills. I'll be in the water filming every pass that I have. But still, we are only two pairs of eyes in the water, so we, we will miss minkies. And it's really helpful to get the photos from the passengers because they're along the rope and they're up to 10 additional pairs of eyes. That is where the top deck becomes so important. Arnold is studying minky acoustics and behaviour and is part of the team. He keeps a constant topside visual and without this visual, we might not be having such wonderful in-water encounters. Every trip we find out some new things and that's great. And it's great to tell the tourists on the board that what, what, what they found this week. And it's, most of the time it's very, like it's cutting edge. We had days of minky experiences just like this and many opportunities to catch a glimpse into the Minky's mysterious lives. It really makes you wonder how anyone can kill these intelligent and beautiful animals. This is where the research for Minky's is so important. The more we learn about whales, the more people want to protect them. We have about six Minky whales around the boat. They're coming at us from all directions. On board, you could feel the excitement and the passion and the desire to understand these curious whales. And the whales could feel it too. seen this week was Bitchy. oh my oh, god wow. Wow. so once again thank you very much indeed to all of you for your contributions to the research it's been a very very exciting week a big week 55 animals is a big week um, so you can uh, go away with some I hope very powerful memories of your experience with the minkies and do remember this is unique there is nothing else like this in the world. This is such an important uh, project, not just for tourism, mm -hmm. but for uh, the whales and for long-term conservation. Because these whales are the cousins of the ones that the Japanese are hunting. The big minis. That's right. The people coming and being as close as a meter and having an emotional experience that creates the word of mouth and the reputation and that no one wants these whales killed. On this pass, the Minky and I looked into each other's lives. We both reached out to each other, and I know it was a moment I will never forget.
another great day. Thank you, well. And, and like I said, I'm looking over here, and all of a sudden, woo, right underneath me. <laughs> Got a really good look at the markings. I am hooked. Humpback whales have cruised Australia's shoreline for millions of years. These majestic whales grow 12 to 16 metres in length and can weigh nearly 40 tonnes. When they breach, you really appreciate their size and strength. But did you know that whaling wiped out 2 million whales? and pushed many of these ocean giants to the brink of extinction? The humpback whales on the eastern coast had a population between 45 to 60,000 and got down to just a few hundred animals. It was annihilation of a marine species. and they still have not returned anywhere close to their original numbers. Both our east and western coastlines are graced by these majestic creatures, and they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars to our tourism industry. The Gold Coast, which is a famous beach holiday destination, also offers the opportunity to get close to these marine giants. David, what's so special about the Gold Coast and whale watching? Do I have to say anything more? Well, obviously <laughs> the Gold Coast itself is, is, is a special part, I think, to, to many Australians and international visitors. We have got one of the best, best locations on the eastern part of Australia. We have possible of 25,000 sightings every year. So, yeah. so we're absolutely thrilled to be able to offer our visitors this new experience on the Gold Coast, being whale watching. So we're lucky here on the Gold Coast that we've got a whale watching association? We do. It, it's called the Gold Coast Whale Watching and Conservation Association, Lynn, and it's been operating for three years on the Gold Coast, and it's made up of the five whale watching operators that are currently running, and Gold Coast Tourism as well. So, so it's great because then I guess in a business sense they are all competitors, yet whales are the priority and we've all banded together for the greater good of whale protection um, and whale awareness because we all know these animals are a lot more valuable to us alive than they are dead. There are three key activities. Um, firstly, the association does have a code of conduct, which is um, all the operators do abide by those rules. We also have three key events that we run throughout the season, Whale Protection Day, Whale Awareness Day, and of course we kick, kick the season off with the Blessing of the Fleet Ceremonies. And Whale Protection Day, Lynn, is, is the final event on the whale watching season calendar, and, and this is a great day where, where we virtually slash the cost of whale watching tickets in half and invite anybody out to whale watching. And then on that one specific day, all the funding and from ticket sales goes towards whale conservation and the charities that we have decided to align ourselves with are Sea Shepherd, um, I4 and SeaWorld Marine Rescue too. Whale watching is certainly something that's going to just grow on the Gold Coast. I mean, the latest statistics we had is, is an increase of 39% in whale watching in one year. So just goes to show you that, that this activity um, is something that people want to do. So what are your thoughts on sustainable tourism? I think, Lynn, that it, it, it's just not a pretty word anymore. It, we, we do need to practice what we preach, and especially tourism as an industry. I mean, the natural wonders that we have here in Australia are one of our biggest draw cards, and the whales that we see are, are, are just something that is so special to everybody. You know, we're just on the tip of the iceberg, so it's an industry that's only going to grow. The Gold Coast is my hometown and I truly love the highly intelligent whales. So to see this kind of commitment to sustainable tourism is a very warming feeling. Welcome to Whale Protection Day on the Gold Coast. This is the boat we're going on, but every operator on the Gold Coast gets together today for the good of the whales. All the proceeds of the day go to organisations like Sea Shepherd, I4 and the SeaWorld Rescue Boat. It's a great day out. These same whales that we 
we'll hopefully see today are the same whales that may be in danger of being killed in Antarctica this summer. It's great to see people banding together who not only share the same passion for whales, but are also committed to helping protect them. It's an absolutely beautiful day here on the Gold Coast. You can see it just behind me and we're heading out to sea to try and find some whales. This is a great spot to go whale watching. It's known as the Humpback Highway, just three kilometres offshore. Oh, he's doing a bit of towel slapping. This is a very defensive, very defensive move here. They're doing a big towel slap, which often is a way that they fend off predators. Hopefully there's no predators around this whale. All of the operators on the Gold Coast offer sensational trips. It's been an amazing day. We've had a mother and calf just breaching forever. Breach, 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 both together. The calf did like a hundred breaches and the mother, she must have done about 20 herself. It's just the most phenomenal day. Now it's time to head back to the beautiful Gold Coast. And here's how you visit these places.